So one of the uh, the craziest trade I've heard floated, Rhett, and you'll get an occasional, what about this, what about that? But this one, for whatever reason, is really resonating with people, given that Connie's brand new and given that we don't know a ton, I guess, about what's going to happen next in this offseason. So this is Aaron Portsline and Julian McKenzie. Julian covers the Flames of the Athletic. Portsline covers the Blue Jackets. The conversation is about Elias Lindholm to Columbus, Rhett, where he'd be reunited with Johnny Gaudreau. He, of course, has one year left on his deal. Um, the key for Columbus, says Portsline, is if he's willing to sign an extension or not. The Blue, Blue Jackets wouldn't make a trade straight up number three for Lindholm uh, if he doesn't sign. If he does sign an extension, it's a trade the Blue Jackets could get excited about. Lindholm is not only in his prime at 28, but has shown previous success with Johnny Gaudreau. We've seen their chemistry. It's impressive. So if Lindholm were to sign an extension, I don't know what the plus would be or if it would have to be that massive, Lindholm with an extension and maybe a second round pick to Columbus for number three overall. Now, this is not what we've seen from the Flames. Win now mode, make playoffs now, always make the playoffs. But number three overall could be a face of the franchise, like your next set you know, of jerseys you drag up to the rafters. Number three overall is likely a number one centerman. It's, it's Bedard one, it's Fantilli two, and then after that, it's... Leo Carlson or Will Smith, very high-end number one center profiles. I'd never really thought about Lindholm for a pick that high, and maybe this is completely unrealistic, but it's an interesting conversation about how quickly the Flames could pivot. Uh, and I think that that's the important part, right, is what's Conroy's vision for this team? The, uh, I've brought it up so much. They were close, but you have to – you have to either find some faith that you believe that being close meant they needed a save and they're just a, a spot away from making the playoffs and having a Florida Panther type run, or you take a longer term view and, and you do a trade like that. I'm not, I, again, there's the ifs, ands, or maybes of that trade or this or that. I don't know who the number three pick is. I don't know the, I mean, everyone talks how good the draft's going to be, but if you don't think that you have the right chemistry in that room, signing Lindholm to another long-term deal, I really think handcuffs you. Uh, you're going to have him aging, Kadri aging. We know Huberto has to bounce back, but Kenny, I don't know. And what 30s, does, yeah. right? And he's going to be in his 30s. He's going to decline eventually. Bigger 30s. Back, Backlund's getting older. Yeah. My guts tell me, and I, it's a bit of a bias because it, it's been a while since the Flames kind of did it with the Bennett, Monaghan, Kachuk era of drafting. I would rather go that way. I would make that trade. I would, I, I would start to build a youth movement. And you've got goaltending. Keep your Markstrom. You've got Wolf coming in. You've got Vladar, who's been very good. Who knows what he even is? So you've got solid goaltending. You've got defensemen that are good. Keep those guys together and build from the defense out. And if that means moving Lindholm, I, I, again, though, the, the catch to me would be, can I get rid of other guys? I mean, I know mm -hmm. I could trade Michael Backlund yep, no if, he, if, he, if he agrees to go. But if... if but it, are Kaji and Huberto the guys to lead a youth movement? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know that. And can you move one of them? Can is one of them more suited to take someone under their wing than another? You need to see bounce backs from both of them. Neither of them showed you in year one that they are those guys. You hope you see something different in year two. What do you think of when you see that sort of trade out there? And, and it doesn't have to be that trade, but the idea of taking someone in their prime and turning that into someone that's got fifteen years on a career yet to begin. I I agree with Rhett. You know just. In the junior hockey, how it is, you look at the, the skill that you're probably not going to wait that long for this this pick to to pan out. Um, you look at who's who's in the the final four. You know, in that pick, there's there's Heiskinen's, there's Eichel's. All these teams have those high end picks. Yeah. So I think for for Conroy for him to, to you know to really put his his mark on this the, is I think is it, it's kind of it would be an ideal. If you can pick that high, why wouldn't you, right? Yeah, and we've heard so much about this draft class, and that doesn't mean that every kid's a superstar, and we know Bedard will be that. Fantilli, is there a ledge there? 
you know, is it a true center? Maybe a guy ends up on the wing, and and those that's sort of what, what you're saying, right? There's all these little nuances about it, but the, the idea of taking a guy about to get to 30 who's in his prime and turning it into an 18 year old. That's one that I don't think we've thought about much over the last five years here. And to be fair, you didn't have reason to think about it until you saw this team face plant this year. And now a new GM, a new vision. 